Welcome back to an, uh, the first uh, Pong tutorial. Uh, we're actually not going to start programming in this video. Uh, I haven't even prepared myself for Pong. I can make Pong, I just haven't made the exact code that I'm going to show you guys. So uh, we're going to just go ahead and set it up. Uh, let's go into uh, into your favorite web browser, whatever it is, it doesn't matter, I don't care, as long as it's not IE9, I will not judge you, or any version of Explorer. But you can use it. That's just a joke, I don't, I really don't care, I'm just waiting for, here we go. We're gonna go head over to my website, uh, you can just go to tinycountrygames.com, I have it favorited, so, it's kinda my website, so, <laughs> you can just go directly to it, and it, my internet, my internet will load it while I'm recording. We're gonna go back to the downloads page. So go back to Game Dev Club. Um, my thing on the YouTube page will just have a link right to the um, the downloads page. We're gonna go to Game Dev Club. And we're gonna go to downloads. Let it be slow because my computer sucks. Downloads. All right. So now that we're here in downloads, we can go to libgdx. Uh, it's an open source game engine for Java. libgdx is meant to be able to deploy on any platform with Java, so you only have the right one version of the code for your game, and it will be available on desktop, Android, iOS, and HTML5. We will be using libgdx to code our games, but we will only make desktop games. You can figure out yourself how to make Android games, it is not that hard. So uh, I'm going to discard it, I'm going to save it as save link as I'm gonna make an entire just new folder in general so in my game dev club folder how about my other game dev club folder I have multiple we're just gonna put it here save I don't know where it went oh there it is hiding from me so you're gonna go ahead and run it if you're from if you were you know how to run a file that you that you download it's just a jar I don't know what my computer's doing you know how to run a file I don't have to show you I'm gonna pause it and let my computer be stupid so uh, yeah, it opened up finally. So uh, here we have our setup. Oops, we're gonna be using this a lot. So first of all, we're gonna give it a name. So Pong will be our name. Our package. So remember how this default package? Uh, that's what they're talking about. You want to have a package. You must have a package. So com is a good way to start. Alice to com company name. So when I do it, it's TCG. For tiny country games, but for when we are going to do it in club, we're going to do SSHS GD SSHS or Santa Susana High School Game Dev, and the name of your game dot pong. Game class game. Our destination will be in not those documents. These these documents. Uh, game Dev Club. And we're going to make a new folder with this little button, or you can make one in. Windows if you want. Android SDK, don't worry about that, it's going to be grayed out. As I said, we're only making desktop games, so only make the desktop. Uncheck that, that's a physics engine that we are not using. Use free type and controllers are something I will show you uh, later, but we're not going to use it in Pong. Now, this is important, go to advanced. Eclipse, check that. Save. You cannot work with it if you don't have it uh, made for Eclipse. So make sure everything's the same. Name Pong, package, game class. We want everything to be the same for when we work together uh, our code doesn't not work, isn't, is compatible. So save uh, and you're gonna click generate. So you're gonna wait for it. Um, it's gonna take a bit. I don't know if I should uh, show you guys it going or not I won't but just know you have to wait it I have the beauty of being able to cut out the part the waiting part but uh, you don't so uh, yeah I'm gonna pause it 
Okay, so it finished. Make sure you have to wait till it says done here and it gives you instructions. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to go into our folder that we created it in. So, Pong, we're going to make a new folder. Just call it Workspace. Oops. Workspace. Uh, I like to have a workspace for every single one of my games because all of these would be games and having so many of these everything gets all cluttered when you have multiple things open look how messy it is you don't you don't want that okay well, it's it starts to get kinda crazy so we're gonna go ahead and switch workspace so click file switch workspace and click other and you're gonna find where you put that workspace so in my case it was in my passport uh, if you were at club when we did this I told you to do it on your desktop uh, that just makes it easier to find uh, so go ahead and do it on your desktop make the pong folder on your desktop if you want workspace click OK OK make sure to select the workspace folder not the folder holding the workspace folder. Just a uh, little heads up. Now, gotta wait for Eclipse to open again because it's gonna restart. Uh, it's gonna put all new, like default uh, settings into it. So if you like mess up your view, of Eclipse, you can just make a new workspace elsewhere and it'll reset, which is really cool. As you can see, it just opens up and uh, you can close the welcome page and you have no projects, everything's brand new. So now you're going to go back into File, click Import, General, Existing Projects into Workspace. Now this time, you are going to select the Pong folder, not the workspace folder, the Pong folder. And click OK. It's going to give you these two. You want both of those, and you're going to click Finish. If you do this wrong somewhere, you will get errors. It won't build like right now. It just took some time, but since it just built my workspace, it, uh, it got fixed. But if you screw up uh, what you do, uh, it will not build. So let's take a look at this. Uh, here we have our JRE, as I said, that's just uh, Java itself. This is our reference libraries. This is kind of, this part is not really important, this part is. All of these, this is what we will be using in our thing. Look at this code that they're giving us, letting us use. We all need to know it. Um, assets, this is where all our Aesthetics will go, all of our uh, our pictures, our fonts, our music, our maps, everything will go in here. And then these folders are just linked, so everything you put in here will also pop up down here. Uh, reference libraries, as I said, not important down here, but important in the core project. The core project is where all your code will go, and then it makes other projects that just makes it runnable. So see our desktop launcher, this is just a main method that runs our game. Game is where is pretty much the, the game. It's just the main class. You can put everything in here but that's really ugly and gross. So uh, yeah, so to run it we're gonna go into Pong Desktop. One way you can do it is just right click the project, click run as Java application, and it'll search for a main. You want to select desktop launcher. All right, and here we go. We have a running game. This is what they always have it do when you first start out libgdx. Uh, when you first start a project, um, let's mess with this. Let's look at the code. We have our imports. We don't need to know about that. Sprite batch 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 equals new sprite batch. It's something that uh, can draw images or other things on the screen. It has a bunch of different things. Uh, a texture is an image, basically. Uh, it, you give it a string of the name of the file that's in the assets folder. If you have a folder, say if you have slash textures, you would have to do textures slash that, and it'll look for 
as slash asset slash texture slash this this is the image that they're using as you can see it's right here the clear color so oops so every time you render a, when you render a game it's just drawing the game on top of itself over and over and over and over and uh, if you don't have this clear color say uh, say we have a float X alright float X let me put x equals 0 and we go here x plus plus so now it's just that every frame x is going to be added this is just draw the image at x y position and we get rid of these two lines let's see what happens look at that it looks like it's getting stretched over itself so if we set the clear color and we tell it to clear, it's just going to draw a background of that color uh, in between every frame so it looks looks natural. The clear color is just the color of that background so you can set it to white. This is RGB out of 1 so instead of out of 255 it's out of 1. Uh, uh, let's go ahead, if you have seizures or epilepsy, don't watch this. I did this during club and I thought it was really funny. So let's give this a random value. Matthew Tills. Matthew Tills is what you will use instead of the math class because it's so much nicer. Random that just picks a number between 1 and 0 randomly. So if you run it, it might be a little laggy. This render method, this create method is pretty much a constructor, but it's not. It just it gets called in the constructor of applicationless adapter, but it's a uh, it's along with the other stuff that we don't need. So uh, create is just pretty much what we'll do to construct everything. And render will be called at every frame. Every frame 60 times a second. Alright, and now let's give this random position. So we can do float y equal to math math utils dot random and let's just make it a uh, so when it draws this image, the zero zero, it's the bottom corner of the image. That's the image's position, and the zero zero is the bottom corner of the screen. So Matthew Till, so we want game or GDX dot graphics dot get height. That's the height of the screen minus IMG dot get height. All right. and at every frame it's going to do that and we can just copy this make it float x replace all this with width width just get width give this x and now it's just random between uh, yeah so that's just messing with it it's a random thing every every frame uh, so yeah, you can resize it, it'll automatically do that. You can make it have code at resize, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you all of that in the Pong tutorial uh, that we're going to start. But if you want to go ahead and be ready for Pong for next time, just delete everything in the game class except for the clearing stuff, because that's stuff that you will always have in your game no matter what you are making. So get rid of it, 0, 0, 0, and 0. So the fourth numbers are alpha. Actually, that should always be 1. Get rid of all these with the yellow lines because we're not using those classes at the moment. So just make sure it looks like this. When you run it, nothing should happen. It should just be a blank screen. It's just drawing black background on top of itself 60 times a second. So that's libgdx. Uh, we're going to get started with it. Uh, whenever. Uh, let's see when that is. Yesterday was Halloween. So, uh, on the 30th, we're gonna do it on the 6th. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, see you later. And, uh, if you have any questions about LibGDX, Skype me, text me, email me, find me around campus, or talk to me at club, and I will answer your questions. Goodbye!